My name is Anne-Marie Maffedon and I run non-profit Stemets. Black people are incredibly creative, so STEM is a perfect you know, marriage to the community. And so STEM I see as almost like a shortcut that we can use to solve problems that matter to us but also solve problems that matter to lots of people. There's been a lot of black people who have contributed to the world of STEM, but have actually just not been recognised. So as a science teacher um, in particular, one of the uh, major impacts that we have in communities is the recent COVID pandemic, um, and some of the attitudes towards vaccines and masks and some of those things. And, and in my opinion, a lot of those attitudes came around uh, because of a lack of scientific literacy. Science teachers, in my opinion, certainly uh, contribute and help the community as a whole because these students are able to, to go out in the real world, understand the information which is available to them and make really key critical decisions based on their health and their communities as well. So STEM means science, technology, engineering, maths, that's what it stands for. For me, it means creativity, it means innovation, and it means the future. Representation is key. That's what's fundamental. If you can't see it, you can't be here. When I uh, went to my career teacher a number of years later, when I was 15, he said to me, Naira, what would you like to be when you grow up? And I said, oh, I would like to do a sub that involves mathematics and logic. What my career teacher said to me was, Naira, somebody of your physique should become a boxer. So I went home and I told my parents saying, look, my career teacher said I should become a boxer. And my dad said this to me, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. So my name is Dwayne Brandy. My job role at the moment is deputy head teacher at an inner city school in Greater Manchester. What was the biggest change for me was working a pupil referral unit. So that's when disengaged students who have been kicked out, suspended or permanently excluded from school, they were going to this facility. And I realised a lot of these children, and most of them were black, they weren't coming out. Going into teaching as a black teacher, um, I was slightly uh, worried about the reception that I would get. I actually cut my hair off because you hear these stories of these, you know, black pupils having to go through a bunch of different legal systems and so on and so forth to, to get them the right to wear their own hair, right? However, when I got to the school I'm at at the moment, we have a very diverse leadership team at my school. And one of the most important things that I saw in their uniform policy was the fact that they encourage their students to wear their hair in whatever way they want, whether it be for cultural, religious, or any other means. STEM teachers are one of the most important things when it comes to future STEM talent. I think what's interesting, and in some ways it's frustrating, but in other ways has a really big upside, is that if you talk to most of the people across at least the UK population, their relationship with maths and their relationship with STEM is defined by the relationship they had with their teacher. So the Teach First training program uh, starts off with uh, what they call a summer institute, okay? So it's a few weeks of really intense learning about teaching, learning about the philosophy of teaching, uh, learning some teaching techniques and practicing that with some of our other trainees. September of last year now, I was in school, a uh, very hands-on approach. Obviously we do training at the same time, which we do with Teach First as well as our university. And of course, with that kind of progression, with those movements to uh, those leadership roles, a basic teacher may be earning between, you know, 30 and 50,000 pounds. The pay certainly can get right up there. I mean, there are, there are, for example, some head teachers out there who are earning, you know, six figures. I always knew that I wanted to be in a position of influence so we could start making these changes, as I discussed before, in regards to removing these barriers for our kids, looking through a lens of safeguarding. Because I've stuck to my values and nurtured my values through various different courses, etc., um, I was able to follow that through and it's led to a position of leadership. So, again, for me, it's took me seven years and um, I've become a deputy head, which is a pretty short amount of time. We're not just talking about Black History Month, we're not talking about October, we're talking about all year round. So I established Aspiring Heads, which is a community interest company to tackle racial injustices within education. Aspiring Heads is very, very personal to me in the sense that I just never want another Black educator to experience what I experienced on my journey. And our flagship programme is about developing and supporting black 
teachers who were aspiring to step into leadership roles. Now this came about following events regarding George Floyd and that was another reminder that racism is very, very real. I remember being invited by the founder of Young Black Teachers Network um, to come and speak and actually I was unaware of this network and I was invited to speak and just seeing such a number of black educators in one room who just wanted to learn from me and I really was able to identify the impact that had um, on them. I still want to make the biggest impact that I possibly can. People believe that there are not that many brilliant mathematicians of colour out there. That's not true. So I stepped into teaching in a quite a naive way. You know, I had that vision as a child wanting to step into education and I felt, yes, I'm going to step in and it's going to be great. But then I was faced with a number of challenges. I actually feel that I was, to some extent, failed throughout education and I wouldn't want that for anyone else.